My name's Ashley and I'm a bat carer and also one of the three co-founders of Bristol Bat Rescue. My favourite fact about bats is that uh, brown long ears, when, they're, when they go to sleep, they, you know their little, their little ears, they like to tuck them underneath their wings, so it's really cute. Bristol Bat Rescue is a small group of dedicated people that want to rescue, rehabilitate and release bats back into the wild. My interest in bats came from the fact that I uh, did a degree in zoology and then I went on to do a master's in global wildlife health and conservation. And from that, I decided that I wanted to do wildlife rehabilitation. So I got in contact with Kiri and Stu, who at the time were running um, a bomb bat group. And then I started doing bat care with Kiri and then about a year ago uh, they asked me whether I'd be interested in founding a little charity to do with bat rescue. My role entails talking to the public. So the public will ring us up and say that they've found a bat in distress, so it might be grounded, um, it might have been caught by a cat. We'll send someone out, often it's one of us three, but now we've got a team of 11 people so we, they can go out too. We then go to the, the person who's rung us house and then we'll talk to them, we'll take the bat off them, we'll assess their injuries. Often rehabilitation ends up with euthanasia, that's just part of it. If their injuries are particularly bad, we'll take them straight to a vet and they'll get put down. If their injuries are treatable, we'll take them back to the hospital where they'll undergo rehabilitation depending on how serious their injury is and then we'll release them back into the wild. 50% of the, the bats that come into the hospital are caught by cats. A lot of that can be um, actually stopped by just owners keeping their cats in at dusk and dawn because that's when bats are most vulnerable. So when bats come out of a roost, they do this thing where they just sort of dive and then go up. And that's like if a cat is just sitting in the right place, it can just swat a bat down and then obviously cause some injuries. Uh, over the summer period, it's mainly pups. So I think we had, I don't know, like 20 or 30 pups that came in over the summer which is an awful lot and they need two to three hourly feeds, day and night. So if we can't reunite baby with mum, then it is an awful lot of work for us to be doing. My favourite, I think, is Harold. He's only got one wing. Basically, he got an infection in his wing, so it had to be amputated. And uh, him and Chinook, um, they're like best buds. It's really cute. Yeah. We do a lot of educational talks and walks, but we try to reach out to the public about the plight of bats. A lot of people believe in those myths. I don't know if you know the general myths about bats, that they get in your hair, that they um, are blind. So it's trying to debunk those myths most of the time. And when you tell people that their eyesight is as good as ours, that they don't go in your hair because they've got echolocation to you know, help them not bump into stuff. And uh, a lot of people are often surprised. And most of the time, because we have the education bats and we'll take them out with us to talks, people are really excited to see them because they've never seen a bat before. An awful lot of the time people are like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. And that's one of the reactions we get the most. Trying to reach out to people um, with social media is probably one of the best ways I've found. So when I first joined Kiri and Stu, we just had a Facebook page, which was doing pretty well anyway. I added the Instagram, we've got a Twitter, and we've got a YouTube as well. People just love anything about bats, which is really good. It's, it's really nice to know so many people like bats because you always think that people don't. And obviously sharing posts makes people more aware. And our little videos that we put up of our bats just eating the their food, that makes people think, oh, they're really cute, and then they'll reshare them, showing pe people that they're not so scary. So, yeah, social media is definitely a, a good way of getting people more aware of bats. The thing I love most about Bristol Bat Rescue is, I think, the releases. Um, because at the end of the day, that is our main aim. Obviously, talking to the public and educating the public about bats, but to be able to release them back into the wild, knowing that you've done everything you could possibly have done to care for that animal, and just to see them go, that I think is the most satisfaction that you could possibly get out of rehabilitation.